Naples fucking sucks. <laughs> Can I read you my favorite review of all time, the Naples review? Yeah. Worst, of, all right. worst, uh, worst gig ever. I got a one-star review. I, I had to favorite this because I love it. One star. By the way, my mom will just send me bad reviews I get. <laughs> She'll be like, this is unacceptable. I'm like, I never would have seen this if you didn't. <laughs> and I'm expecting it to be like the New York Times. I'm like, Mom, it's TripAdvisor. We didn't have to do this. <laughs> this is what the, I read it, though. I was like, Naples, I bombed every show to the point that it was like, oh, I remember I, after one show, this old guy walked up to me and he goes, you mumble too much. That's why no one laughs. <laughs> and I said, I really hope you don't slip in the shower later. And... <laughs> He said, what did you say? I was like, I guess I do mumble. That's crazy, but <laughs> constructive. No, I bombed every show there, and uh, this Yelp review wrote, on Friday night, December 14th, Sam Morell was inappropriate. <laughs> I like that she gave the date like it's Pearl Harbor or something. <laughs> we had a family event planned for good laughs. Our son, our son daughter-in-law, adult autistic grandson, and his friend, I'm like, adult autistic grandson? <laughs> Is that how you refer to him in public? <laughs> we'll be three for dinner tonight. Me, my husband, and our adult autistic grandson. <laughs> He's like, my name is Steven. Can you stop? <laughs> Please stop calling me that. <laughs> the first two comedians were great. The food was excellent. Then came Sam Morell, the headliner. A terribly bad choice. He spoke vulgar opinions that were not funny, degraded his and our U.S. president. <laughs> we, can't, we can't even have the same president. That's how much she hates me. <laughs> he degraded Naples. You're damn right I did. <laughs> and he used autistic kids as a joke. I did not, actually. That, that autistic joke I just did was new, so... Uh, <laughs> I, did. I don't even know what she would think I did. I just scanned the crowd. What is that, some adult autistic grandson in the house? Why don't you get his ass up here so I can roast him? <laughs> Autism style. People began to protest. No one protested. It's, it's a comedy show. I've never been bombing that bad where I've been like, shit, they're breaking out the picket signs. This is, this is pretty rough. He could not address that without insulting the age group of retirees, telling them that they'd be dead soon. Which, let me elaborate. I, I didn't say, ha ha, you're gonna be dead soon. I said, I feel bad that this shitty comedy show is one of the last things you'll ever see. So, if anything, she omitted the compassion with which I spoke. He also said he would punish the crowd by going on longer. Well, look, this is true as well. Look, yeah, of course. Some, the, here's the options on the road. I can sulk in my hotel room about how bad the show was, or I could burn this motherfucker to the ground. So what do you think I did? I, I talk about this a lot, but, you know, there was a guy I met on the road. I, first, comedy is very unusual where it, the highs and lows are unlike anything. Where, like, I remember the first night I ever did Conan. I love Conan. I did Conan for the first time, like, 2014, right? <laughs> the next night, I'm doing a gig in Virginia Beach. Not a good gig. And <laughs> I remember, like, you feel good for a minute, and then you walk in the club, and the first thing they said to me, the bartender goes, someone needs to replace the urinal cakes in the bathroom. <laughs> And I was like, oh, yeah, I'm the headliner for the weekend. She goes, so no? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that's a, that's a pretty hard no right there. <laughs> she said, well, I can't do it. I'm a woman. I was like, I don't think you heard me. Uh, I think it's a bad look for the venue if the guy whose face is on the poster is lurking behind people at the urinal like, can you speed it up? I'm on in five. <laughs> of course I bomb every show. I remember getting off stage, and I see to my left, I see a giant poster of a magician named Stu a, holding up two doves. That's the picture. He's a good-looking young guy. He's holding up doves. A very strange... Yeah, Stu. 
And I was like, that's a weird uh, picture. And then I turned to my right, and it's Stu at the bar. It felt like magic. <laughs> and he just looks at me, and he goes, that was a rough one, man. And I said, you're damn right, Stu. And he goes, let me take you out, man. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you the real Virginia Beach. <laughs> I was like, all right. He goes, let me tell you something. And this stayed with me forever. He goes, I fucking run Virginia Beach. <laughs> I was like, all right. And he goes, I'm going to show you the Virginia Beach no one talks about. I said, that could be any part of Virginia Beach. <laughs> no one talks about your city. I got to be honest with you. And by the way, then he just takes me to the bar next door. I was like, I could have found this. Got a long line. I said, hey, man, I don't like bars where we have to wait on line. Can we just go somewhere quiet and drink? He goes, oh, we're not waiting on line. I run this shit. So he starts cutting the line, and people are getting pissed. He just gives them the finger. And I'm like, this guy <laughs> might be a lot. <laughs> we get to the front of the line. The bouncer sees him and immediately goes, not tonight, Stu. <laughs> people know this guy, and Stu goes, you better let us in or else. And the guy just let us in. Magic trick number two. Very impressive. <laughs> We're at the bar. He's buying everyone drinks. He's a fun drinker. He throws his card down. Everyone's doing shots. He's just getting us drinks. We're getting drunk. He starts doing magic. And he's so damn good. People are gathering around and applauding. I'm like, this is pretty impressive. After one of the tricks, he just grabs one of the women and starts making out with her. And there was a moment where I was like, this dude might run Virginia Beach. This is <laughs> pretty impressive. Then he lets her go and he goes, fuck this shit, strip club. <laughs> and I was like, hey man, that's not really, uh, it's not really my scene. He goes, trust me. And I was like, damn it, Stu, we made it this far. What the hell? So <laughs> we walk out, we start walking to his car. It's me, Stu, his designated driver. Once we get to his car, <laughs> we see that it's been a, he's got a BMW. The second we see it, it's been horribly vandalized. He falls to his knees and goes, no. <laughs> Who would do this to me? And my first thought was, anyone. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I've known you 47 minutes. I could give you a list of suspects right now. <laughs> then he huffs and puffs, and he looks up. He goes, we're still going to the strip club. And I was like, respect, Stu. Way to bounce back. <laughs> we're in the car. He's getting cheerful again. We pull up to the strip club, and he's like, you've never seen anything like a Virginia Beach strip club. And then we walk in, I was like, looks pretty standard, honestly. Uh, <laughs> I'm no expert, but this is, <laughs> the second we walk in, this beautiful stripper walks up to him, she kisses him on the mouth, and I was like, who is this guy? <laughs> and he says, this is my girlfriend. I was like, oh, Stu, <laughs> you lovable sleaze. <laughs> I've known this guy for an hour and a half. I've watched him cheat, and I've met his girlfriend. It's very <laughs> impressive. I hope that when she busts him cheating, he at least handles it like a magician. She finds a cocktail napkin. Who is Denise? He's like, let me see that. Whew, magic. <laughs> She's like, damn it, Stu, that was pretty cool. He's like. <laughs> we get wrecked. We get hammered, pulled all night. You know, all night we're drunk. Next morning, I'm dying. I remember I told this story in a podcast weeks later. And a week after that, my phone vibrates. And I look down, it says Stu, and I freak out because I don't remember saving his number. <laughs> I freak out again because I don't remember saving the picture that pops up, Stu holding the two doves, like this. <laughs> I press ignore, he texts me, pick up, motherfucker. <sighs> I said, hey, Stu, he goes, you made me sound like a piece of shit on that podcast. And I just said, no, I didn't, I made you sound cool. And he goes, true. <laughs> That's all it took, and for that, I really like Stu. He's a decent guy. Anyway, I don't know why, but after the TripAdvisor thing with my mom, I just started looking up other reviews of mine on TripAdvisor. There's, there's some other bad ones. There's some people that don't like me. I start looking up my friends. My friends have some bad ones. For some reason, I just look up Stu, and I find some bad reviews. One of them just says one star. Stu bombed our corporate event. We'll, we'll not have him back. And I was like, that's bullshit. <laughs> Stu's a good magician, and he deserves better. I left my own review. I wrote five stars. This motherfucker runs Virginia Beach. <laughs> 